Hey guys, it's Chris from UX Playbook. Let me show you how this actually works. But before we begin, I just want to mention that UX Playbook works on all devices. So your phone, tablet to your computer, and you can use it either on the native Notion app on your phone or computer, or it works in a web browser. So no need to download anything. Okay, so let's show you first an example, the Proto Persona Play. So if I make this full screen, okay, here it is. So every play works the same. So I'll highlight some of the fundamental structures of uh, what you see here. So either we start with a video which explains just briefly how to do this play, or we start with an image. And um, the image is really just a one pager uh, to help you really quickly summarize what you're looking at. But every play starts the same, as I mentioned. So we go to the overview, a brief description and definition of what it is. Then you have the objective and value. The objective is really why would someone go and do this play? The value is a way to communicate to your stakeholder or team about why we should do this play. Then you have people, prep time, time and difficulty. It's really people, how many people should be involved, what's the correct size or the recommended size, prep time, actually how long it will take to prepare, time to do it is time to execution and difficulty level. That's self-explanatory. Then we have who, when, and materials and remote. Who is really about who do we need to involve in this play? Who are the decision makers? What about the facilitator? What about different sort of cross collaboration stakeholders that we need to involve? Then when, when is simply in which situation do we need to do this? For example, Proto Persona, if we don't have a existing Proto Persona, or if we speak about the user in a generic way, then we might find that we need to do this. So every play works like that. I'll give you the who and the when. Also, uh, materials and remote. So materials are the on-site materials you need to execute this play. And remote is, of course, when you're at home, how do you do this in a remote setting? Then we go to prep. There's always a uh, something we need to do before we actually execute the play. So here we have a step-by-step -step of the preparation with templates. So here's survey template and the workshop template. And I just want to mention templates are a great way for you just quickly duplicate and execute the play. You don't need to think too much about how to prepare. The template will help you solve that problem. And the templates are usually from Google, or another free resource out there that you can quickly leverage, which is integrated into your existing tools that you use at work. So no need to worry there. Then we go to step two, either it's a workshop or it's actually the step-by-step -step process of how to do it. You will notice that there is actually some pro tips on the right-hand side. These are lessons learned by doing this hundreds of times. Uh, with a bunch of designers and also users. So these are really quick, so you don't make the same mistake that we did when we were doing this. And you'll notice there's uh, different structures or formats of the pro tip. Sometimes they are fill in the blanks. Sometimes they are a certain way. And really, if you just read it, you'll figure out it really quickly in terms of uh, what is needed for you or what sort of advice it's giving you. Yep, yet again, step by step with timing. Um, and then to finish every play, we always have a summary. Fill in the gaps here with another template, right? So really to summarize what you need to do at the end of it and how you should present it to stakeholders. Okay, so that's about it. This is... Um, UX playbook and each play works in similar fashion, right? As I mentioned, some have a one pager at the top and lots of different formats for templates and pro tips. So I hope you enjoy using UX playbook, check out our free resources and uh, yeah, can't wait to uh, make you a better UX designer. Cheers.